Keyshot Studio 2025.1 just dropped with a handful of features that I think make for a pretty solid update. And in this video, I wanna give you a demo of my top five favorite updates, as well as mention the other little updates and improvements they snuck in there as well. First up, we have a brand new type of light inside of Keyshot called a planar light. And it's similar to an area light, but it comes with a few more features. You can control how much the light spreads out in both the vertical and horizontal axis, making it far easier to shape and direct your light. Planar lights support color alpha channels, letting you hide the planar light wherever your texture has transparency, which is something you couldn't achieve with area lights. This makes for far more lifelike reflections and lighting. You can also easily change the width and height of a planar light in the real-time view, which is not possible with area lights. Area lights could be scaled, but that would often skew and shear your light depending on how it had been moved previously. This can also cause major issues if you ever need to animate an area light. The planar light behaves more like a procedural spotlight, rather than using physical geometry to emit light, which means it's technically more efficient meaning faster to render and should be able to support more features down the road. Next, we have a new way to position and move lights around our scene. Here's what I like about the new light positioning tool. First off, you can place highlights with physical lights just like you can inside the HDRI editor. Control left click and your highlight hits the surface. Default lighting positions speed up this process. It's also possible to position the light without moving the camera in your real-time view, even if you want to place the light, say, behind your object. And you can now adjust the brightness and distance your light is from the object, all with your mouse and keyboard. In Keyshot 2025.1, I got an 8% increase in GPU speed, which is nice. But unfortunately, when I tested the CPU, I saw a 10% decrease in speed on the newer version. So I'm gonna assume that's a bug that'll be addressed soon, hopefully, uh, but also my testing could be flawed. Next up, we have rounded edges in GPU mode. Rounded edges allow you to quickly simulate fillets on the edge of your CAD models for better realism. Now, historically, this was limited to CPU mode, but thankfully, this valuable little feature can now be used with GPU rendering. Finally, I'd like to highlight the new animation feature called Hide Event. It's a simple on-off switch that lets you essentially hide or show a part throughout an animation. Now, we've had access to fade animations in the past, but it's not ideal when you simply want to either hide or show a part. Now you can quickly hide or show a part on your animation timeline by adding a hide event. You can also use a hide event along with a fade animation. If you wish to start with a part hidden, then fade it back into view, Here's an animation where I did exactly this. Hide the part, then further down the animation timeline, have it show, and then fade in. Well, those are my favorite updates now available in Keyshot Studio 2025.1, here are a few honorable mentions. There's a new, more reliable SOLIDWORKS plugin, updated Alembic and Collada importers, a new GLB and USD export mode to help you create web-ready viewables, and retest light function is now available through scripting. Now, based on years past, we should see a couple more releases yet this year. And if Keyshot's able to offer a nice range of meaningful updates each time, then I think 2025 is gonna be a pretty good year for rendering. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Now, whether you're new to Keyshot or just wanna brush up on your rendering skills, I highly recommend you check out my free mini course here on YouTube. It's a two-part series called Keyshot Rendering for Beginners. I'll make sure I link it up here. Be sure to check it out. And until next time, happy rendering.